congenital abnormalities in orthopedics. Abnormalities of the upper limb. The hand, trigger thumb, constantly flexed IP joint of the thumb, treated by longitudinal division of the constricted fibrous sheath, webbing of the fingers or syndactyl, most common congenital abnormality of the hand. For the treatment, is surgical. The optimal age is 4. V forearm. Hypoplasia of the radius. It is relatively uncommon but serious. Hypoplasia of the radial ray. Early correction of radial deviation of the hand. Maintenance of this correction during growth and improvement of hand function. For the surgical therapy, Z-plasty of the skin division of the fibrous band and cast. For the elbow, we could consider the dislocation of the head of the radius. It is rare, not usually detected early. Radial head is dislocated laterally. The radius overgrows in length. Prominence on the lateral aspect of the elbow results in some limitation of supination. Reconstructive operation rarely improve function. Excession of the radial head when skeletal maturity is reached. For the radio ulnar sinusitis, congenital bony continuity of proximal radius and ulna are rare. May bilateral. Forearm is rigidly fixed with slight pronation. Minimal disability, no surgery is needed. Hypoplasia of the clavicles. It is relatively uncommon, manifested by dropping and excessive mobility of the shoulder, usually bilateral, may associated with delayed ossification of the skull. The combination results in cladocranial isotosis. No treatment is required. When hypoplasia only in the middle portion, differentiate with non-union and congenital pseudoarthrosis of the clavicle. High scapula or sprangles deformity. It is undescended scapula, sometimes associated with abnormalities of the cervical spine. Ligamentous connection between medial border of the scapula and the lower cervical spinous process. Rotated downward, limitation of shoulder abduction. Surgery is limited for cosmetic purpose only. Amputations in the upper limb should be fitted with prosthesis as soon as possible, even before crawling. By school age, it is have to full control of prosthesis, cosmetic, and power. Localized abnormalities of the spine. Spina bifida, scoliosis, cyanostosis of the cervical spine or clipple fail syndrome, muscular torticollis or brain neck.
plantar bifida. It is the most common spine abnormality. Incidence of 2 in 1000 birth. Etiological factors involve elevated serum alpha fetoprotein in early pregnancy or inadequate folic acid intake are related with genetical factors. Prevention is the fortification of folic acid. The focus is on associated neurological deficit, whether it is the limb function or the deficit of bladder and bowel incontinence. Classification based on morphology. There are occulta with meningocal, with meningomyelocal, with myelocal or rachis juices. Spina bifida occulta. It is the mildest degree of spina bifida. 10% of the population, it is the least serious. Their characteristic in spina bifida occulta is dimple, hairy patch, pigmented area, and hemangioma. More likely to be complicated by midline spur that splits the spinal cord. It may develop neurological deficit. Spina bifida with meningocal. The meningus may extrude through a larger defect in the neural arch, covered by normal skin and containing cerebrospinal fluid and some nerve roots. The spinal cord remains confined to spinal canal, usually little or no neurological deficit, except when external manifestation of the skin occur. Spina bifida with meningomyelocal. Spinal cord and nerve roots are involved in the sac. Deficient overlying muscle and subcutaneous fat. In severe case, the skin may be absent. Always associated with serious neurological deficit, such as flaccid paralysis or spastic paralysis. Almost half of the cases coexist with hydrocephalus, may be from Arnold Chiari malformation or aqueduct stenosis. Spina bifida with myelocal. It is the most severe form of spina bifida. Spinal cord and nerve roots completely exposed. It is an inevitable infection which results in death in early infancy. Clinical course of the neurological deficit usually present from the beginning, however it is relatively static, may increase as a result from nerve root tension or infection. Treatment of spina bifida with neurological deficit should require team approach, careful removal of the sac as early as possible, provision of good skin coverage, decompression of hydrocephalus, and release of tethered cord. Scoliosis Congenital type varies in severity and prognosis. Hemivertebrae, short, relatively mild curvature, and well compensated. For multiple congenital abnormalities, there are multiple hemivertebrae, asymmetrical fusion of the vertebrae, and absent ribs or fused ribs. It is severe and progressive with subsequent growth. Scoliosis may be difficult to predict. Therefore, repeated clinical and radiographic examinations at regular intervals are required. It may also be accompanied by congenital abnormalities of the kidney, heart, or spinal cord. Sinostosis of the cervical spine or Klippel-Feil syndrome 
failure of vertebral segmentation in the cervical spine. Clinically, the neck is unduly short and relatively stiff, and the posterior hairline is slow and transverse. Congenital high scapula may coexist. Surgical only if there is a cosmetic indication. Muscular torticollis or worry next. Exact etiology is still unknown. Within first few weeks of life, firm swelling in one's sternocleidomastoid muscle, hypertrophy of muscle, gradually disappear but leaves contracture. 20% coexist with TDH. Initially treated by physiotherapist, 90% of cases can be treated completely and permanently by physiotherapist. For resistant case, release of the soft tissue and contracture. Generalized congenital abnormality. There are generalized abnormalities of bone and generalized abnormalities of nerve and muscle. First is the osteogenesis imperfecta. Its selling feature is the weakness and fragility of all bones that results in frequent pathological fractures. Mutation of type 1 collagen genes. Collagen G1 gene is the main type of collagen in both dentin, sclera, and ligaments. Failure of periosteal and endosteal osteogenesis, dentinogenesis, boost clara and lax ligaments. Type 1 is the most common, the mildest form, pathological fracture when started to walk and has blue sclera. 1A with normal T, however for 1B is dentinogenesis imperfecta. Type 2 is the most severe. Clinical manifestation involve blue sclerae. Fatal in the perinatal period. Type 3 is the severe. There are multiple fractures at birth. The limbs become progressively bowed as a result from multiple microfractures, disrupted epiphyseal plate, cufosis, and scoliosis. Initially, blue sclerae, which later become white. Lastly is the type 4 collagen, similar to type 1B but with normal sclerae. There are no effective medical treatment yet. Reasonable precaution by the child and the parents, protective long like braces or inflatable splints and crotches. For pathological fractures, treated by ordinary means. For the type 3, Sofield and Miller's multiple segmental osteotomies of long bones and IM metal road fixation. Bailey, we use extensible IM road. Achondroplasia or dwarfism, it is short limb relative to the trunk. It resulted from autosomal dominant abnormalities. It affects all endochondral ossification of the bone, short limbs, but normal trunk. Normal mentality and life expectancy. Arachnodactyly. Spider fingers. Excessive length of limb relative trunk, it is autosomal dominant disorder, 15% spontaneous mutation, and with fibrin gene. Excessive longitudinal growth of epiphyseal plate, it is the antithesis of achondroplasia. It is marked joint laxity, resistant and progressive scoliosis, pectus excavatum, 
flexible flat feet associated with congenital heart disease, congenital dislocation of the lens. Operative treatment when the skeletal deformity interfere with the child function. And chondromatosis, relatively uncommon, associated with the fact of longitudinal growth of some long boots. For resistance, epiphyseal plate cartilage cells, no ossification, remain as large cartilage mass. Within the metaphysis, irregular ossification and calcification, the lesions stop growing at skeletal maturity, where complication malignant changes to chondrosarcoma. For treatment, operative corrective of bony deformity by osteotomy in the area of normal cartilage, surgical correction of leg length discrepancy, and surgical trimming of grossly expanded metacarpal and phalanges. Multiple hereditary exostosis, it is relatively common and deforming. Gradual development of multiple outgrowth of bone and cartilage from the normally broad metaphyseal region of the long bones. It is autosomal dominant, lack of the normal osteoclastic activity, no remodeling, trumpet shaped metaphysis. They stop growing at skeletal maturity. 2% of the patient malignant changes to chondrosarcoma in the treatment operative only for exostosis that are causing symptoms and producing deformity or enlarging rapidly. Neurofibromatosis It is a generalized congenital abnormality of peripheral nerves. It is autosomal dominant and associated skeletal abnormalities. If coffee or light spot is evident, there is elevated cutaneous nerve neurofibromata. Treatment is the correction of the associated skeletal deformities and the excision of a neurofibroma. Hypotonia of neuromuscular origin. It is a generalized congenital abnormality of muscle that results in extreme lack of muscle tone and looks like a floppy rack dog. There is a decreased tendon reflex and generalized muscle weakness. Milestones of musculoskeletal development are delayed. Coexistent joint laxity. Prognosis for severe cases are poor. The treatment is limited to support of weak and floppy limbs and trunks by appropriate braces. Amyoplasia congenital marked stiffness and severe deformity in many joints. It looks like a wooden roll. Aplasia and hypoplasia of many muscle groups sometimes defect in the anterior horn side of spinal cord. The muscle abnormality is static, but the secondary changes in and around joints tend to become more severe. The trunk usually is spared when involved scoliosis. The treatment is a daily passive stretching of the joints, osteotomies, and arthritis is actually preferred.